Sam Allardyce will leave his post as England manager. Going off Jason as one of the most successful coaches in their history. After 67 days in charge, 100% winning record, no losses, no losses against Iceland, no upsets. He will leave the job uh, as England Three manager. immediate points that are important. Uh, according to the update, it's 68 days. Oh, 68. He had an extra day. It's Sam Allardyce. That's <laughs> not how you pronounce it. Uh, and it's not just English football history. It's the greatest record in managerial history. Nobody has a 100% winning percentage. I could be wrong if there's anybody else who there's got not, fired after, someone who's who left his post after 50 In the 60. Danish <laughs> league who's won every game or something like that. I don't know. Somewhere, somehow, the comment section will find that 100% manager. But this manager. is all due uh, to what you would call fantastic reporting from the Telegraph. Investigative journalism. And That's by the I way... I love. This gets me... Some context. I love this. Some context to this. First of all, if you're surprised that Sam Allardyce was roped in, and not roped in, he roped himself into this scandal, then you have not done your research on Sam Allardyce. And by the way, I know that people are going to be like, you Francis, you said Sam Allardyce is perfect fit for England manager. Yes, no, 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 as no, no, a manager. No, 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 no. You said, and fairly put, it, Sam Allardyce is the manager that England deserves. deserves. Right, you're right. You you're say, right. might have said in there somewhere that he was a good fit. It makes sense. To help blah, 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 to help grow him. Yeah. But you said, quote, word for word, he's what they deserve. Yes, and you sir. weren't wrong. And by the way, so 2006, I believe, great documentary, another form of investigative journalism, looking into the dodgy dealings of Big Sam. So before we get to the video of context, <laughs> let me just give you an overview of what Big Sam is to me. He is the business CEO who is always loud about how much money he's making, he's schmoozing, he maybe gives a little tap on the behind of a secretary on the way in, or oh, maybe 10%. Her, calls her toots. Calls up maybe love, <laughs> sweetheart. And then Bud. he just <laughs> wants everyone to look at him and talk about how he's able to bend the rules and get his commission and be able to do things as a manager as well as a businessman at the same time. And by the way, he is now going to have his day. And I don't think he'll move on to another position for a while, I would seem, because most people won't touch him after seeing this unless they're really devastated that they might be relegated. They're like, I need Big Sam. He's the only man that can save us. Either way, take a look at the video. Great reporting from The Telegraph. And we will comment after. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are, ways, there are ways around that, as I understand it, or ways through that. Um. Yeah. I mean, obviously the big money's here. What they would be better doing is making sure they've got the ownership and the agent. So they own the agent, the agent works for them as well. Because then the agent, if he gets sold on again, the agent will get more money for his, if he gets sold on again. Do you get a percentage of the player's agent's fee? The agent pays to you, the company, because he's done that new deal at that club again, or they sell him on, and you don't get any part of transfer fee anymore, because yeah. you can't do that. But, yeah. but, you, you, but because the size of the contracts now, the contract we were 30, 40 million yes. at 10 percent. Yeah, I understand. And that. You get, you get, you've done a deal with the agent where you get 5 percent of the of the agent's fee, which is which is massive for doing about two hours work. Like. You, you've got, you're set up a fund to buy the economic rights effectively. Yeah. 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 Certainly in the places where we can do that, yeah. Which Third party ownership is only banned in this country. And France. And France. And France. Yeah. And still get around. So here are some other points that came up during Sam Allardyce's meetings with the reporters. Chris Hite's predecessor, Roy Hodgson, dubbing him as white. Obviously, because Roy can't say he's ours, mm -hmm. and saying that he hasn't got the personality for public speaking. Well, you definitely have the personality, Big Sam, because you cannot keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Said England's <laughs> players were underperforming because they had a psychological barrier and can't cope. Suggested that players who were not being played for their clubs should not be picked by England. Described the FA decision to redevelop Wembley as stupid. So, basically, he was filmed telling undercover reporters uh, and posing as businessmen that it was not a problem to get around FA rules imposed in 2008, which prevent parties owning football players' economic rights, and FIFA has since adopted a similar stance. So some managers have spoke out and said that they have to wait uh, and do not jump to conclusions. Not like Arsene Wenger, a very unlikely source, he wanted, yeah. before he was fired, um, stating that he wanted to wait, I believe. To see, just to let, uh, he thinks that he thought that Sam Allardyce should have been able to defend himself. Yes. Uh, first, 
uh, even though he is the type of manager who said he's been fighting against the stuff that he was allegedly doing for a lot of years. Yeah, so uh, in terms of what Sam's stance was in this is that he felt like there's a way to try and, of course, uh, make some extra money from the large amount of fees that you see going around the transfer window. And everyone, agents, businessmen, they're going to try to latch on to the growth of the game. They're going to try to latch on the more transfer fees, the more agents fees, the more people can try to make more money from it. I think there was a proposal that he was going to pose as a speaker uh, in, uh, I believe, across seas somewhere and talking about how to manage finances in the industry of football and be able to take home a lump sum through that. So again, there's many other ways. I'm not going to get into the full details of it. You can go to Telegraph and see the step-by-step. -step. Whether you agree or disagree for some reason on what he has to say, the guy is notorious for trying to break the rules. Um, back in 06, again, there was plenty of accusations surrounding the ways that he would try and grease agents and grease players in order to get them into his club. Literally or figuratively? Probably both. He's a greasy guy. I'm just one of those guys, greasy guys. So, according to the reports from the Guardian, is that uh, Gareth Southgate might be asked to take over For the, the post. next four matches. Yeah, they just and I, the FA announced that. I think Southgate has came out publicly earlier stating that he did not want the full-time position. I think that he might have felt a little bit undermined just that he never got it in the first place. A layover for now. Yeah, uh, Pardew might be dancing his way into the position. Alan Pardew could be in. Um, there's other potential managers to come in. Uh, I'm not going to speculate on who I think should take over. We'll maybe do a clip in that yeah, uh, as things point. start to, to, to go over. I stated a few weeks back that you need a manager like a Gus Hiddink to try and rebuild this England squad, someone that's notorious with dealing with crises and try to About deliver them back to glory. Arson. I don't think he'd take it. You wouldn't take it's it? It's not. I don't think he'd take it's that. Not, it's unfixable. Yeah. Uh, so the one quick thing for one, those who uh, try to act like Gordon Gekko rarely can pull off it as suave as Gordon Gekko, the fictional character from Wall Street, did. Therefore, Sam Allardyce, who looks nothing like him. How many yachts can you really water ski behind? And secondly, <laughs> Francis, uh, I don't think I have a secondly. Actually, at all. <laughs> that was really it. So... <laughs> You're on oh, point with the hard outs today. All right, let us know what you think. <laughs> Big Sam filed thoughts in the comment section below. Francis underscore Maxwell, Twitter Francis Maxwell, host on Instagram. Jason Rubin 91 on both. I'll catch you guys soon.